today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is the day. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is the day. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm giving you my fears and sorrows. Where you lead me, I will follow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is the day. As we gather here for worship today, I'll invite you, if you have a candle nearby, to go ahead and light that candle. Uh, And then as we give thanks to God for God's love that holds us together during this time, I'll invite you to to call your pet over or gather a, 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 a sign of God's creation from nearby. It could be a house plant or something from outside that you enjoy uh, as we offer God's blessing for all creation on this day of St. Francis of Assisi. Friends, welcome here to worship with the faith community at Cross of Hope Lutheran Church. It's a blessing to gather here in worship this uh, St. Francis of Assisi uh, Festival Sunday. Uh, Welcome as we gather here to begin uh, with a litany of repentance and longing and then a blessing of our pets. So if we have have any of our young folks watching and worshiping together here this morning, I'll invite your help for this part. There's also a part for us to... to speak along as well, the bold print there, all of those is in your home resource. But kids, what I need you to do, Addie, and you can help out here, is um, when I gesture towards you, I need you to say good, like this. Okay, so let's practice, shall we? Good. So when I gesture, you say good, Addie. When I gesture, you say good. Good, very good, all right, because we're talking about creation, and God's creation is, Addie, good, very good, all right. I'll invite you into this litany of repentance and longing, dear friends. In the beginning, the Spirit moved over the deep, 
new life daily unfolding at God's call. Darkness and light, Addie. Good. Skies, lands, and seas, Addie. Good. The earth and all that fills it, plants and rocks, the finned, the feathered, the furry. Good. At the last humankind in God's image, Addie. Good, yes. Yet we have failed to draw from that goodness in care for God's creation. Forgive us, God, for the ways we have exploited earth and its creatures. We have misunderstood our calling to be protectors of God's creation. Forgive us, God, for the ways we have exploited earth and its creatures. We long for new relationships with God's creation that has been entrusted to us. Help us, God, to make a new community with all that lives alongside us. May the merciful God who calls us to tend earth and all its creatures deepen our knowledge of creation's interweaving so that our lives are shaped in wholeness and peace with all living things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. And now if you have uh, your sugar stop, halt, sit. If you have your pets nearby or if you have a house plant or uh, just want to go grab a piece of nature, uh, let's offer here a blessing to that through which we see God's delight and God's joy. All right. So uh, we're going to all do this together. Um, and again, the words are in your home resource. And at the time where it says uh, a pet's name, you go ahead and speak your pet's name, Addy. Be ready to speak your pet's name. Uh, and uh, then we'll offer this blessing for our animals. Holy God, we thank you for the gift of sugar. Through this animal, you have brought many blessings. Today we pause to name our gratitude and to pray a blessing on sugar. For the companionship of our pets, we say thanks. Bless this animal's life in our care. May they know love through all their days. Amen. Now let's sing of God's great creation together. All creatures worship God most high, sound every voice in earth and sky. Alleluia, alleluia, sing brother sun in splendor bright, sing sister moon and stars of night. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Sing, brother wind, and with clouds and rain, you grow the gifts of fruit and grain. Alleluia, alleluia. Dear sister, water useful, clear. Make music for your Lord to hear. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Sing, brother, fire so mirthful, strong. Dry, far in shadows, join the throng. Alleluia, alleluia. Dear mother, earth so rich in care. Praise God in colors bright and rare. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. And you, most gentle sister death, waiting to hush our final breath. Alleluia, alleluia. Since Christ our light has pierced your gloom, fair is the night that leads us home. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Oh, sister brothers, take your part and worship God with humble heart. Alleluia, alleluia. 
creatures bless the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, three in one. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for the gift of life. Recalling Francis, who celebrated your love for all creation, today we embrace our connectedness to all, to wind, sea, and sky, to earthworm, giraffe, and chicken, to fish and puppy, to cats of the jungle and in our homes. Deepen our care for all that lives. In the name of Jesus, our teacher, savior, and friend. Amen. A reading from Philippians. Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more, circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, those I have come to regard as lost because of Christ, more than that, I regard everything as loss, because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one that falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds, because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. 
So this is the 30th Sunday now that we've been distanced from one another. I, I keep a journal and I write notes uh, and reflections. And so um, this global pandemic has been challenging to say the least, hasn't it? Spoken on the weekend that normally begins the local holiday of Balloon Fiesta. How we miss thee. Um, but I'm glad that we get a couple uh, balloons up here as locals. You know, families uh, struggle to balance work with kids learning from home. Jobs have disappeared and daily case uh, and death counts keep us mindful of the reality and the risk of this virus. Our political climate has only complicated and confused this season of the journey. What does it mean to be church in a time of pandemic? This is a question that frames 30 weeks of responding faithfully, contemplating deeply, and living in steadfast prayer together. So for the next several weeks, we're going to continue this contemplation, this wondering, this pondering. As we engage the readings now from the Revised Common Lectionary, that set of reading, readings which guides the seasons and the life of the church, Big C. With the festival days of Reformation and All Saints coming up, we're going to consider some of the habits of our faith tradition and how they might be remembered for this season of the journey. We've titled this worship small group series, Spiritual Heart Healthy Habits naming that we have certain spiritual habits, those things that are settled or regular tendencies or practices in our lives, especially ones that is hard to give up. It's a habit. And they ground us in times like these, and they also send us into the future in a healthy way. We start with a spiritual heart healthy habit. Remember that you belong. Remember that you belong. And I want to frame this habit through baptism, because to a certain extent, to remember that you belong is to remember your baptism. Baptism itself is more than just a a uh, once-in-a-lifetime, one-time event, but it's a habit. It's a daily habit of remembering, of remembering whose you are, uh, who you belong to, and remembering what that means for your life each and every day as you engage the journey through life. Baptism is a revealing of belonging, a revealing of both uh, your unique and shared belovedness in God. Our welcome in baptism is into the body of Christ for the revealing of God's love and life for the world. And in the world. To remember your baptism is to remember that you belong to the divine love of God as a personal and communal starting point, as a beloved creation of God. It's not because of anything that you've done or accomplished or any external markers that you carry with you. Baptism is simply a revealing of what you are. Paul provides a fascinating story of this good news. We, we heard this story in our epistle reading today from Philippians. According to all of the external markers, Paul belonged. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people Israel, God's chosen, a tribe of Benjamin uh, to be favored, Hebrew born of Hebrews, the law, a Pharisee, uh, the expert in religious law. Uh, zeal, how serious was Paul? A persecutor of that, uh, of that new Christian church. Righteousness under the law of Moses? Blameless. In all of the markers of faith, Paul belonged. And yet for him, the deepest sense of belonging and the truth of belonging in God came from the experience of seeing God on the road to Damascus. When ironically, God revealed God's self through the darkness of being kept from literal seeing. It was in this experience of Christ calling Paul into a different sense of belonging, very internal and deep, that transformed, that remembered his understanding of of belonging 
beyond the external, which is all expansive and all inclusive. This new understanding of belonging is not unmoored and adrift, like one might feel perhaps in a time of global pandemic. But Paul's new understanding of belonging is simply and deeply grounded in Christ. Paul says, I I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. In our baptism by water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. The spiritual heart healthy habit is formed when every day we remember our baptism, how we've died to the sin and death of the self, of thinking what I earn, uh, what I look like, where I come from, what I have accomplished, any and all external markers that would seek to justify God's love for me and my belonging before God. We've died to that sin and death of the self and been raised to new life in Jesus Christ, which always says, I am enough, I belong. Now go and love God and your neighbor. This is the remembering that is done through this spiritual heart healthy habit. It is not, it's, it's the remembering uh, that grounds and frames Paul in the adventure of the journey. And he says, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Paul's story here reveals and follows the universal pattern of death and loss and resurrection and renewal. Paul let go of the old markers of belonging and found renewal in the truth and the freedom of belonging in Christ. And this is the gift of baptism, the gift of your baptism, a daily reminder, a daily opportunity to remember you belong. You belong. Christ Jesus made you his own. Now go and love God and love and serve your neighbor. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you. And I will praise you with all of my life. is in you my hope is in you lord my strength is in you lord my hope is in you lord in you is in you my life is in you lord my hope is in you lord my hope is in you lord in you you with all of my life, and I will praise you with all of my strength, with all of my life, with all of my strength, all of my hope is in Is in 
As we gather in prayer this day, we lift up uh, our beloved Cordova family. Uh, Many of you saw um, word from us this weekend, and if you haven't yet, I I will bear the news of uh, Jane's unexpected death, Ron's wife and beloved mother to Chris and Kristen. Our hearts are heavy, and our... um, yeah, I'm not, not quite able to process all of this yet. Um, and so we join them in their grief. Uh, we join them in prayer and in longing for uh, the promise of God's life that surpasses even death. Let us pray. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, you call us to work for peace and justice in your vineyard. Refresh the church with your life that we may bear fruit through work and service. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for the abundant harvest of the earth. Bless and care for those whose hands bring the fruits of the earth to the tables of all who hunger. May we be inspired by your servants who care deeply for their creation especially Francis of Assisi, whom we commemorate today. Lord, in your mercy. Curb the impulses of greed and pride that lead us to take advantage of others. Grant that world leaders seek the fruits of the kingdom for the good and welfare of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Sustain all who suffer with the promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering, and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We call to mind those who are struggling today. We pray for Linda, Florence, David, Nick, John, Sherry, Jeff, Karen, Kathy, Wendy, Carol, Dante and Carmine, Bobby, Bill and Jim, Lisa, Dolores, Harry, Robert, Norma, Ruth, D, Cap, Karis, Tony, Kay, Joel, and all those we name now aloud or in silence. Be near to those who grieve. Ron Cordova and family and friends at the death of his wife Jane. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for blessing and gift of relationship and for our partners in ministry, our school ministry, Family Promise, Operation 505, Compassion Beyond Borders, Luther House, Lutheran Family Services, Lutheran Advocacy Ministry, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, Glenwood Springs, Colorado, and Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, Casper, Wyoming. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all managers in our community and for all who seek employment. Give hope and a future to those who lack meaningful work, those who have been marginalized or abused in the workplace, and those who desire new opportunities. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for the saints who teach us to live faithfully in your vineyard. May our chorus join theirs until our labor is complete. Lord, in your mercy. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold you and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Friends, it continues to be a blessing to share this journey of belonging together. Your continued giving through the ministries of Cross of Hope is greatly appreciated during this time of pandemic as we continue to be God's hands and feet in the world. We'll take this time to continue to continue our giving. Feel your 
just some notes on our continued journey together during these this season uh, of our um, lives together 
First, the uh, the joy we celebrate today with Kathy Alban. It's her birthday today, so happy birthday, Kathy, and I hope you have a, a wonderful day as we celebrate uh, and give God thanks for uh, the gift of your life and the gift that you are to our community. Happy birthday, Kathy. And then, of course, the uh, sad news. Uh, we talked a bit before the prayers about uh, Jane Cordova's death, and so there will be some times to spend, uh, some opportunities to spend some time with Ron and the family. Uh, first, there will be a visitation at French's funeral here on Golf Course on Wednesday, October 7th, and that is between 5 and 7 p.m. So you can come to French's for the visitation. And there will be a memorial worship here at Cross of Hope on Saturday, October 10th at 11 a.m. Uh, our cap- capacity continues to be limited during this time of pandemic and so we'll ask that you just let the office know if you are hoping and planning to attend so we can plan appropriately we'll also uh, do our best to stream that memorial on our facebook page so you can go and find it live there as well Uh, Wow, Women on Wednesday had a great informational meeting on this past Wednesday, and they will be meeting for their first session uh, as they gather for the first and third Wednesdays of each month at 4 o'clock here in this space uh, with our masks and distanced appropriately. So if you would like still to come and check that out, be invited to join them on Wednesday at 4. Five, four o'clock. We'll celebrate communion today, uh, and so if you want to come to the lawn of Cross of Hope between 10 and 11 for a walk-up or drive-up communion, be invited to do so. Uh, and also we have another opportunity at 5 o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, Luther House is Young Adult in Global Missions. will host a Zoom meeting with Kendra, who is one of their uh, uh, young adults there uh, serving through Young Adults in Global Mission. Uh, we had some friends with us sitting in, some new friends with our musicians today. Uh, that's Mike and Tom. Tom is a student, a new student at UNM. Uh, and they are new, have newly moved here from South Dakota. So we welcome them and are appreciative that they could offer their gifts to, to join us in our worship today. Receive now God's blessing. Friends, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me all along my pilgrim journey. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me in my trials. Lord, walk my trials, Lord, walk with me. When my heart is almost breaking, Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. When I'm in trouble,
I'll invite you to join me here at God's table with your bread and wine or grape juice there at home. Uh, I'll invite you to join me in these words of institution that's on your home resource and then during the distribution to distribute to one another with the words body of Christ broken or given for you and blood of Christ shed for you. It is a blessing to gather around God's gifts for God's people. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, creator of the world. From the earth you give us bread to eat. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. Through your goodness you give us the fruit of the vine. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered here together by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ, and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you now and always. Let us go now in faith, sharing hopeful words of peace with one another and with the world.